Hey there, thanks so much for tuning in to Duck Bricks. I'm Chris, and welcome to another episode of Bionicle Fan and Reviews, the show where I review the fan-created, canonized, or not even canonized, Bionicle models from around the Bionicle community that personally interested me enough to build them as mocks and then actually review them and showcase them for all of you. For today, we are actually reviewing a contest winner from one of our prior Bionicle fan and contests, which was centered around the dinosaurs of Bota Magna, a contest that we held around last year, and I promised to build every single one of the finalists. And finally, we are at the end of this journey. 11 or 12 dinosaurs later, I have reviewed them all, and this is the last one I had left on the list, last but not least. So let's take a look at the Thundertail Longneck by Rummy Bee. Okay, so this is the Thundertail Longneck by Rummabeer. It was one of the Bionicle Dinosaurs large category finalists, and I believe the last one that we had to review, I personally was waiting to finish this review because I was waiting for a few parts to get in, and now that it's done, I can say I have finally finished all of the Bionicle Dinosaurs of Bota Magna fan and contest reviews. In case you aren't sure what exactly that was, almost a couple years ago now, I held a Dinosaurs of Bota Magna fan and contest to reimagine what the dinosaurs living on Bota Magna might have looked like that appeared briefly in these story serials and were actually part of the cancelled final wave of Bionicle in 2010. Now this is, again, one of the finalists from the large category, and I did set out to review every single one of the finalists, so I'm really happy to be able to showcase this one for you today. Now we're going to start off here with posability. Posability-wise, honestly, what you see is kind of what you get. You can swing the tail back and forth like so, so you can kind of move it like that. You can move the legs each individually up and down. There are kind of knee-like joints on each of them, so you can get it in a semblance of a walking pose, which is really nice. And you can even move the head up and down somewhat. It is a little bit restricted in articulation, thanks to the Bionicle G2 Skull Spider heads being used primarily throughout the neck, but you can move it around, and you can move the head back and forth. I love the way the head is done, because you can even open and close the jaw if you're careful with it. It almost looks turtle-like. Again, the winner was the Nui Nemes, so I guess turtles are really popular here. This feels to me like a Brachiosaurus-type build, and we did see a few of them in the Bionicle Dinosaurs fan and contest, but this one feels like the most kind of standard or mid-sized Brachiosaurus build. I feel like this is the most likely to have become an actual LEGO set, especially in the construction of the limbs. I just really like the way that it's done and the aesthetics in general. Posability aside, we want to take a look at the building techniques here, and by far the most interesting thing about about this particular model is the way the torso is assembled. If you zoom in here, you can notice that the way the torso is done is very, very unique, utilizing a blend of different masks from the dark green Kowalsi here, which is really great for the shaping, to the Midgard Serpent head, as well as a dark green Rakshi spine, also from the Midgard Serpent. Everything smoothly comes together, and I'm really impressed by the look and feel of the body itself. That was something that I was so curious how it would all come together, and it is remarkably compact and well done. Utilizing even Avmatoran limbs, Hordika torsos, Toa Rakshi feet, as well as the Toa Metru shoulder armor, and even some vines to just fully wrap around the body, making it feel very solid and compact, which is a really solid piece of work. I'm a big fan of the overall design of this torso in particular, and honestly, the torso set up a lot of expectations for me about the rest of the build that maybe weren't quite fulfilled. I feel like the rest of the build is fairly simple and okay, and the torso is really, really good. Like, the torso is almost a masterpiece in construction. It taught me a lot in terms of different angles and construction and how to put things together, and I'm really happy with the nice parts usages in the torso, and the rest of the model is pretty okay, but it definitely doesn't feel as crazy complex as the torso. But then again, it doesn't necessarily need to be. One of my favorite things about the model is also the way the head is done. As you can see, the head is using a reversed Matau Hordika head, as well as the Skull Spider mask here, which really works for a jaw. Like, when you open and close this, that feels like a completely different character's face. Again, the parts usages are absolutely sublime here, and I love the color blocking as well, to have the kind of spring yellowish green being used on the front front here, and then on the back are the darker greens and blacks. One of the other great parts usages for this model are the usage of Toa Metru torsos as hooves or feet. This is a really, really impressive parts usage, and I'm a big fan of the way it's done. It uses the pieces in ways I never would have imagined them to be used, but it actually really works. Having them mounted at an angle makes them really feel like the feet of some monstrous or large creature, and I'm just a big fan of the way the parts were used on this particular model to convey 
the story of what the character and creature is in general. Honestly, the only weak part of the model for me is the tail. It's just using primarily CCBS limbs in trans, neon green, and black, and I do feel like that sort of breaks up the color blocking and the careful kind of articulation and planning that went into the front of the build. It just aesthetically doesn't necessarily fit for me, and I love CCBS, but the fact that it just uses plain CCBS when the rest of the model is using predominantly Bionicle G1 elements with lots of detail and pistons just doesn't feel quite right. But again, this is the Thunder Tail, so the entire point of it is that there's kind of lightning arcing out of the tail, and it's almost like the tail is supposed to be, I guess, in the story or in-universe, an energy weapon that can shoot energy or attack people, so... I can definitely forgive it on that end, I get what the builder was going for, but aesthetically for me, the tail doesn't quite work. Otherwise though, aesthetics are really great for this model, and building techniques goes hand in hand with aesthetics. The way that the pieces are used really do complement the overall design and look and feel of the model itself. And I'm personally a really big fan of the way that this particular model was built, especially with the color blocking. Ignoring the tail, you have a lighter green underbelly right here, you have a mix between sand green and dark green, and it never feels random, it almost it almost always feels intentional in the way that it's done. You even have the trans neon green bits of the claws at the end of the hooves here to make it feel like even the feet have some sort of weaponry built into them, because again, the entire point of the Bota Magna dinosaurs was that they actually had weaponry built in, which is a really, really cool feature that this model has. Now moving onwards to believability in universe, I've brought alongside a standard Toa Metru character, as well as a Matoran of Metru Nui, just as examples to use next to this creature. And I feel like, aside from the CCBS pure tail, this actually is really believable in-universe. You've got the same piston aesthetic as the rest of the Bionicle characters, the scaling is really good, you could even have a Toa or Glatorian sized character riding it, like, oh my goodness, that looks really cool actually. Huh. That's actually really cool. I kind of want to have a creature riding it when I have it on display, or a character riding it, which is definitely one of the coolest things about this creature is that it does scale very nicely next to the Tewa, Glatorian, Agori, and Matoran, which is a really, really nice thing to do. Overall, pretty happy with the believability in universe, and we can now move on to the overall points for this particular model. Now, in terms of the poseability, I'm going to give that one an 8 out of 10. I feel like the poseability is pretty solid overall, you can of course get into different positions, but you can't really have it such that it's in a full-on running pose without some of the joints kind of leaning forwards and bending. Of course that will depend on how the joints work, but mostly you can pretty much only keep it in a standing pose. I guess if you're careful you can lift up one foot, but there's nothing super crazy that you can do with poseability of the model. It is a Rahi-like dinosaur after all, or a large creature, so it's not necessarily a ding against the the model, it's just that you can't really do much with it posability wise You can't get it into a cool fighting pose, for instance. Moving on from that, building techniques is easily a 9 out of 10 for me. The torso and parts usages are excellent. I love the Metro torsos being used for the feet. I love the way the torso is built. I love the way the head is built. And really, the tail is the only thing that brings it down for the model for me. Aesthetically speaking, pretty much the same goes. It's gonna get an 8.5 out of 10 only because of the tail and I definitely do feel like there are some places that could have been improved aesthetically speaking when it comes to the gappiness of some of the upper neck part here like this is just fully gappy but I also don't know how they would have fixed that so it's not that big of a deal 8.5 out of 10 is still a really really high score for me to give a model like this and finally believability in universe is a 9 out of 10 as well. This is getting a lot of high scores and I think it's well warranted because it is a really good looking model. There's a reason as to why it was in the finalist category for my Bionicle Dinosaurs contest and huge congrats to Rummy Beer for actually making a model that genuinely really really impressed me as a builder and I'm sure impressed a lot of other builders out there as well. And with that, we have summed up our review of the Thundertail Longneck. This one was a bit of a shorter one compared to others, but it is a smaller size model, so I hope you enjoyed this build, and thank you so much for watching all of these reviews of the Dinosaurs of Bota Magna. I am finally done with the mission. All right, with that, we have summed up our review of the great Thundertail Longneck Mog. Let me know down in the comments below what do you think of this model. Do you like it? What do you think of the building techniques? I certainly had a blast building it. This was so much fun, and with that, I have finally summed up my journey of building all of the finalists of the Bionicle Fanon Contest for the Dinosaurs of Bota Magna. This has been literally years in the making. I believe I started this journey around Bionicle Day last year is when we announced the winners of the small category, so that was 8-10-2022. It is now well past that date in 2023, 
But hey, if I make a promise, I will keep it, even if it takes me over a year to get there. And with that, we have summed up this review, but of course there are a lot more Bionicle fanon reviews coming because I still have more for the Red Star Zombies contest. I reviewed the winner, but I did promise to review the second place winner, so I'll be rebuilding and reviewing that very soon. That's Hydraxa on the Walking Graveyard. I also have some more reviews. Not sure where it's going to fit in my schedule, but at the time of recording, I still haven't reviewed Toa Nadiki yet, so maybe that's out, maybe it isn't, but lots more stuff coming soon. And yes, for those curious, I am still finishing out my reviews of all the Dark Hunters and the Rahi. I have not forgotten about those, literally started that series in 2020, and the Kanohi Dragon is up next. With that, we have summed up this review. Thank you all so much for tuning in to Duck Bricks. Be sure to like and subscribe for even more LEGO news, reviews, discussion, and analyses coming your way very soon, and bye for now.